Ruth. And we're turning to the book of Ruth, chapter number 3, please, the Old Testament book of Ruth. And we are in Ruth chapter 3. And we're reading from verse number 1. Ruth chapter 3, verse number 1. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, that's Ruth's mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? And now, is not Boaz of our kindred, with whose maidens thou was? Behold, he winnoweth barley tonight in the threshing floor. Wash thyself therefore, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor. But make not thyself known unto the man until he shall have done eating and drinking. And it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie. And thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. And she said unto her, All that thou sayest unto me, I will do. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. You don't have to be in a place for too long. You don't have to be in a place too long. When you begin to discern the nature and the kind of place that you find yourself in, It doesn't take too long till you suddenly begin to realize the nature and the kind of place it is. Just being there is enough to learn something concerning that place. There's a feeling that comes from every place, a feeling that gives you that distinction of the kind of place it is. I remember in the mid-80s it was. I was working for Derek Lone at the time, and we were importing cars from King's Court down south. And there was one car that we brought in that blew a cylinder head gasket. And because this car was imported from King's Court, the, all the spare parts, well, the head gasket it was, had to come in from the south. And to make it handy for both parties, handy for us and handy for the suppliers, the cylinder head gasket was left in a pub in Monaghan for us to go and lift. Derek Lone said to me, George, you wouldn't run down and, uh, and lift the gasket out if I'm not going to name the bar, but it was a pub in Monaghan. He says, that's all right, Derek, no problem, I'll run down. And I ran, drove down to Monaghan, parked outside the bar, and walked into the bar and all of a sudden, there was this sense that I didn't like. There was about eight or nine men drinking around the bar when suddenly when I walked in, there was a deafening silence. And I remember walking up to the bar and saying to the barman, do you know anything about a cylinder head gasket that was left? in for Derek Loon 
We are waiting on one, and it's meant to be left in here. No, none about it. Well, I says, can, can you check with somebody? And he left, and all of a sudden I was standing there. I hadn't even changed in my pocket to buy myself a laminate. But those nine men never took their eyes off me. And suddenly I sensed danger. All I could think of was my father being on the police. Here I am in a pub in Monaghan. Why is nobody coming out for? And I waited for about I'm sure five minutes. And I thought to myself, if I turn around to leave, somebody's going to stop me. I, I, I felt it. And I hung on for another couple of minutes until another man came out. And as soon as he came out, he was looking in my direction through the side of the eye. And I caught his attention. He says, tell me this, boss, do you know anything about a cylinder head gasket left in from King's Court for direct loan? He says, we have a car to get out this evening. Ah, oh, cylinder head gasket, here it is, here. And as soon as he spoke those words, the nine other men, whoever was there, went back to their business. Well, I can tell you when I left that pub in Monaghan, I got into my wee Nissan and I spun around the road and she never got under the speed limit till I reached the Hunter Clay checkpoint. I was never as glad to see the checkpoint. But I remember going home that evening when the car finished and I remember saying to my father, did you ever hear of a pub in Monaghan called the, and I named them the bar? Oh, he says, I did. Why? He says, I was in it this afternoon. Well, I could see the color draining from my father's face. And he explained to me the reason why never, ever, ever set your foot ever across that door again. I'm not going to explain it to you, but he explained it to me why. You can tell a lot about a place for just being there. There's some churches you can tell a lot of just being there. There's some churches I've been in, and it's like being in a fridge, cold. And you shake hands at the men at the door, and it's like shaking hands with a crow. Do you ever shake hands with a crow? Cold and heartless. And then there's other churches you go to and you just know by being there it's a lovely, warm, loving, unified place. My text this morning is a very unusual text. But it's one that came quite recently, and it's one that the Lord spoke to me through. And I believe it's where the Lord wants to speak to all of us this morning. It's where Naomi speaks to Ruth. And in verse 4, she speaks to Ruth and says, And it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie. Because, you see, this is where Ruth was going to know her future. Her future lay at this place, the knowledge of her future. And here's my text this morning. Mark the place where he shall lie. Naomi didn't say, mark the place where he winnoweth. No. She didn't say, mark the place where he reaps. No. 
And she didn't say, mark the place where he's threshing. No. Mark the place where he shall lay. Because you see, Boaz was the nearer kinsman. And where Ruth was to mark this morning was going to be the place that would affect her future. But that text this morning, mark the place where he shall lie, God wants us to look at our kinsman redeemer, the Lord Jesus. And this morning, the Lord Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. And God is saying to us this morning, mark the place where he shall lie. And God wants us to mark the places where the Lord Jesus lay. Not where he performed miracles. No. Mark the place where he lay. Not where he preached great sermons, no. We're to mark the place this morning where he lay. Four places God wants us to mark. To mark places where he lay. Do you remember Luke's gospel, chapter 2, for instance? Verse number 7, you read these words. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and led him in a manger, for there was no room for them in the end. Now, let's mark the place where he lay this morning. Let's forget about Mary and Joseph. Let's forget about the innkeeper. Let's forget about Christmas. Mark the place this morning where he lay. And let's sense this morning the type of place as it was. When we mark the place where he lay this morning, we see it was a place, a place of humility. Here's the Son of God led in a manger, no room in the inn. And as I mark the place where he lay this morning, in that manger so long ago, you know, I learned something here that I can't learn anywhere else. I learned something this morning of his humility. And as I look at the place where he lay this morning, and as I mark that place this morning, I see the Lord Jesus willing to take the lowly place. From splendor to throw. From majesty the manger. What humility. Mark the place where he lay this morning. Do you see the manger? Do you see the straw this morning? 
The manger or the straw didn't make him less God, you know. He was as much God in the manger as he was before he left heaven. You know, when I was in the study and I closed my eyes and I imagined that I was there, I could hear, almost hear the Lord Jesus saying in Luke 9, verse 58, he brought these words to my heart and mind. Foxes have holes. The birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. Now, why does God want you and I to mark this place where he lay this morning, the place of humility? It's because he wants the place of humility to mark your life and to mark my life. One of the most difficult things for us to achieve is to be humble. So the old song said, O oh Lord, it's hard to be humble. And you know, child of God, this morning, listen, I believe this morning a man or a woman who's marked with humility will know the blessing of God upon their lives. Do you remember this morning in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, we read these words, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. God was saying we need to learn to humble ourselves before we even learn to pray. The Lord Jesus made himself no reputation. And you know, sometimes, child of God, you and me, and I'm putting myself into the same, into the same platform as you, sometimes we miss far too much what God has for us because we seek too much the lofty place rather than the lowly place. Billy Graham said, A truly humble man is hard to find, yet God delights to honor such people. Humility does not, think, does not mean thinking less of yourself than of other people. Neither does it mean having a low opinion of your own gifts. It means the freedom of thinking all about yourself. O oh, child of God, listen this morning. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Mark the place where he lay, because there you learn something of his, his humility. Child of God, I wonder, does humility mark your life? Does it mark me? Mark the place where he lay this morning, the place of humility. And then in Mark's Gospel, chapter 4 and verse 38, we come to another scene where the Lord lay. You remember there in the boat this time, and you remember a great storm had arose. And there we find the Lord Jesus lying down here, and it says, asleep on a pillow. Mark the place where he lay here. Because if you mark this place, you learn something from his humanity. Mark the place 
where he lay he. Sometimes we get so taken up with the Lord Jesus standing in the boat and calming the storm, and we fail to learn from the Lord Jesus as he lay sleeping that day in the hinder part of the ship. Mark the place where he lay here, because it's here where we can learn a lot from his humility humanity. Do you know, when I look and I mark the place where he lay here, do you know what I learn about the Lord Jesus? I learned this morning that the Lord Jesus had the common experiences of humanity as what you and I have. And as I mark the place, and as I look at the place, and I watch the Lord Jesus asleep in a, on a pillow, it tells me this morning that we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. He knows and understands the, the stresses of life, child of God. When I look at the Lord Jesus this morning, I see tiredness. I don't see laziness. I see tiredness. And I watch those eyes close tightly. I see eyes that knew all about tears. As I see the Lord Jesus asleep in the pillow this morning, I see one who suffered hunger. As I see the Lord Jesus asleep here on a pillow in the hindered part of the ship, I see one who in John 4 was wearied with the journey. I wonder, are you weary this morning, child of God? Mark the place where he lay, because maybe this is what needs to mark you this morning. You need rest. A whole lot of boys talk about burning out for God. I think that's only a load of nonsense. The devil would want you to burn out for God, for you're no use to God if you do burn out. No, the Lord Jesus doesn't tell me to burn out. He tells me to take time out. Maybe this is what you need. I was with friends the other evening. It was the Thursday after, after Christmas, and we're talking about the work of God. And I asked me how things are going, and all the rest of it. And then there came this wee word. Watch, George, that you're not pushing yourself too far. I says, now I'm enjoying the work. Now I love it. And I love the visiting and I love taking the meetings, I says, but the preparation for God's messages would take it out of you. And they said to me, now you watch, you don't overdo it. And I remember a free Presbyterian minister friend of mine saying, George, be careful. You mightn't get tired of the work, but you can get tired in the work. And maybe there's someone here this morning who needs this morning to learn this lesson. You need rest. Maybe there's someone here this morning and you're pushing yourself too far. You're pushing yourself almost over the edge. Learn from this place by marking it well. It's rest you need. Did the Lord Jesus not say to his disciples in Mark 6:31? Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. 
Wonder, are you weary? Wonder, are you tired? I'm talking about tiredness. I'm not talking about laziness. There's a lot of boys lazy this morning. There's a lot of boys in the work lazy. But they're not so lazy at the end of the month when they go to lift their wages. And I'm talking about God's servants. They're not so lazy when it comes to lifting their wages, but they're lazy. But you can, you can get tired, you know. Maybe God is speaking to you. I went home from that ho- house that evening and Tracy says, George, listen, listen. And when Tracy speaks, you have to listen. She says, God speaks through to you, through you every Lord's day. No doubt about it, God speaks through you. But don't forget, sometimes God speaks through other people to you. Maybe God's trying to tell you something. Slow down a wee bit. Because... We all need rest at times. Mark the place where he lay because it's the place of his humanity. We can see the human form of the Lord Jesus. Even though he was God, yet the Lord Jesus teaches me we all need rest. Maybe there's some sister in this meeting this morning and you need rest. You don't think you need it, but you do need it. Some brother may be in this meeting this morning. That's what you need. It's rest. It's not running to more meetings you need. Boys would run to meetings every night of the week. Oh, no, it's not running to more meetings you need. It's rest. Mark the place where he lay here. We can learn from his humility. We can learn from his humanity. I say, when you come to Matthew's Gospel 26, we see another place where he lay. And mind ye, it needs to be marked well. Do you remember the Lord Jesus in Gethsemane's garden? We read that he fell on his face and prayed, saying, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but as thou wilt. Mark this place where he lay here is the place of sincerity. I don't see his humility here. Neither do I see his humanity here. Ah, but I see his sincerity here. Mark this place. For the Lord Jesus to fulfill his will, the Father's will, he had to go through with the cross. He had to go through with Calvary. He had to go through with death. And I wonder, child of God, if you and me would take a wee moment and mark this place this morning where he lay. It challenges my heart this morning with this question, am I sincere in my Christian life? Because if you're sincere this morning to be out and out for God and sincere to go through with God, then you'll always find there's a cross to bear. The hymn writer said, view him prostrate in the garden, On the ground your maker lies. Mark the place where he lay. Because when I mark the place where he lay in Gethsemane's garden, I can tell you there was no turning back. It was not my will, Lord, it's thy will. I wonder this morning, are you sincere to go through with God the place of sincerity? I want to finish with the final place. Matthew 28, verse 6. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And mind you, if there's a place we need to mark, it's this one. 
I can see the empty tomb where the Lord lay. And here this morning, I don't learn anything from his humility here. I don't learn anything from his humanity here. I don't see, uh, learn anything from his sincerity here. But I'll tell you this, I learn a lot from his victory here. Mark the place where he lay here. It's a place of victory. And as I was in the study and I closed my eyes and I thought to myself, what does the Lord want me to learn here? He brought the words of 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through, his law, through the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you something else he brought to my mind, these words. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Who is he in the manger? Who is he in the hinder part of the ship? Who is he in Gethsemane's garden? Who is he that lay in the tomb? Tis the Lord, the King of glory. Listen, don't be reading or looking at these places this morning. Will you mark them? Mark them well. There's great lessons to be learned in the places where the Lord Jesus lay. And may God bless those lessons as we consider them this morning. And we're going to sing our last